Alright, well welcome to the Black Meadow, a place where people go to be happy and not die horribly. Maybe if we walk off the path a little bit over here, get a little distance away from some in ap approaching people on the road, because it's bad to camp on the road. Oh, forest troll. That's not what I wanted. Uh, what if we go back down here and leave the poor forest troll alone? Is he coming after us? You know, maybe we'll maybe we will stay by the path. Anyway, I want to camp because we took some damage, and I'm hoping camping will help us out. They'll use some supplies. Let's rest. Cause so we've been better off in the past. Hopefully, we won't get ambushed because fire. But I want to get off the road to avoid if that's a particular mechanic for uh, for ambushing, perhaps. But if it, I don't, it may or may not be. But definitely uh, don't want to run directly into a forest troll. I think you're best off staying on the path in this situation. What's that? That's a forest troll. He seems less avoidable. Okay. Let's see here. If we wait for a second, I'll play as my my main character. If I go sneaky about this, can I find a path around forest trolls? Because they seem nasty. I don't know if I want to play with them. It's down here. Uh, double speed? There we go. Love you fast mode, you're so great. Oh my god, what are those things? Those are wicks. Whites? Wicks? They seem unpleasant too. But I can go this way, perhaps. There's a weird spirit man. Oh, look! Wildlife! This can't be that bad if wildlife's still around here. There's a camp of some kind. Can I take a look around here? A square bedroll is laid out in in this tent, but there's no other sign of Keith. Oh, I, was I just about to get discovered? Are they in trouble up there? No, they're fine. They're still hanging out. Okay. For briefly, I think someone almost saw me. Oh, someone saw me. Wait, is it just the yeah. is it just the elk? Got it. I think it's just the elk. That's fine. He doesn't matter. What are we doing? Uh, there's a body. Body has oh a fine hunting bow. Could be, be could be good if I used hunting bows, but I use uh, I instead use oh there's spiders here. Lots of spiders. Okay. Oh god. Almost got discovered there. So this may be a better path. Yeah, this could be a better path than going. Burned lady was added to the stash. What the hell does that mean? Hang on a second. What is a burned lady and why is it in my stash? Uh, this is Deerwood. Oh wait, burned lady was an item. That was a plant, my bad. Being overly un being overly uncertain about this. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the other party members. Yeah. And see if we can sneak down here without- Oh, nope. Guess who got spotted immediately? Yeah. He did, they don't quite have the same stealth capacity, do they? Are you staying in stealth mode or are you out of stealth mode? You need to be in stealth mode. I'm afraid to have you even move, actually. I think I'm just gonna have you stay here. I feel like as I try to auto-path you... No, I, I can do that. I can just pause it frequently. I want to get him back up here without him aggroing anything, so I have to be careful. So. Hey. Forest troll combat is now happening. Aloth, let's see if he can make a mess about this. Twice per encounter. Let's do an arcane assault on this guy. And you... Can make a big ol' mess. Let's see. Let's have you... Once per encounter. Holy Radiance, let's, let's buff our party. You'll you attack that guy, but let's buff our party first. Does that... You're, you're just going to attack because you're a wolf and have no special characteristics or commands. Oops. Let's see. Let's try to use Knockdown on him if I can. Alright. Spell cast Durance. And how... Let's see, can I double click on my character to jump to them? I can. Cool. You're still heading upward. Gonna have to probably have to go to slow mode for this just to be careful. So I don't want you aggroing people. Let's be very careful here. Take, take them, take the le the least aggroy path possible if you can. This guy is taking damage. We're doing okay. Let's see, Aloth. How about you back off a little bit? You're really weirdly close to this combat. You are too. You guys can cast spells. It's okay. You don't have to run directly into combat. Let's see. You can cast. Let's cast my missile attack on him. Fire guy is going to cast. Try to fear this guy. That could probably that could probably mess with them. How's our other character down here doing? 
Alright, no apparent aggro, that's good. So, now that you're mo mostly have made your way over, we can now set you up to attack. I think, he I think he'll be able to make it back without aggroing the, the whites or whatever down there. So focus on this group down here. Alright, so you're currently casting a spell. What are you doing? Let's try doing another arcane blast. What, or arcane assault. Come on. Mess this guy up. Oh, it, oh okay, you're, you're casting. For a second there I was concerned because he stopped moving. Alright, let's pick a new spell here. Let's try to dazzle him. Yay, it's so dazzling. It's exciting. Let's see. Blessing. Accuracy and damage of all allies in the area. Let's do it. That'll be handy. He should be able to go down in a second here. You're safe still right here, right? Alright, yep. Main character has joined the area. I'm just gonna let him keep attacking. He, he, I think he can handle it from here. Just try to take this guy out. Our tank is doing just fine. Alright, I was thinking trolls might be a really big deal, so I was trying to find a path around, but I think we're doing just fine. Target destroyed. Alright. Re regroup around the body. Uh, someone go check out what's on him. Let's see here. Troll skin. Why not? Go ahead and leave fast mode, because something could go terribly wrong if we're not careful. Any new surprises as we continue? We're gonna just continue along the path, because that's the logical way to go for where we're trying to go. I'm trying to go right, right? Yeah, on the map. There's a destroyed cart down there. We don't need to investigate any closer. There's, there's some bad creatures around here. This is a place full of death and danger. Can I look at this? Field my scatter, crawling between the beast's teeth. They are not very afraid of this dead dragon. I guess they're just not as ferocious once they're gone. What is that? What is that? Oh, it's gone. I guess I, guess I can stop being concerned about whatever the, that vision was. Should I grab that? Huh? Let's go on a quick scouting mission to grab this. Uh, forest troll. Stealth. See what I can find. Go to stealth mode. There we go. Just want to forge a little bit without getting murdered. Hmm. All right, so let's get out of here before something something goes wrong for us. All right. We're doing all right on this journey. We're getting to, we're getting to Cadnua. It's gonna take us an entire day, basically. Jeez, that's a it's quite a trip. Hopefully, we can learn things about who I am when we get there and what we've become. Quest updated: The Old Watcher. Ah, uh, Cadnua is an impressive in size, but little else. At little else, the keep is in complete disrepair. But if Old Marewald is still lord of this place, then I am likely to find him within. All right, so we are now at our, where we're trying to go to, Cadnua. Trials of Durance. I met a strange priest in Magrin's Fork who claims to have something to gain from questioning one another. Durance says he and I are meant to travel together, and that he can that we can teach one another. Uh, he is a man of many words who seems to raise more questions than he answers. But if I travel the road long enough with him, perhaps I may discover something worth learning. And then, of course, we know that uh. We know Edar wants to talk with Merwald, probably because he has probably lost someone and wants to be able to try to talk to someone beyond the grave, since we know about his friend. We know about his friend from the farm that was uh, hung, unfortunately. So is this place safe or is it dangerous? That's a good sign. I'll go to my casual in the middle of town. Let's walk around as a group uh, formation then. There we go. No more battle formation. I think we're safe now. Who is this guy? Kana. Just off the side of the, pla of the path into Cadnua stands an imposing figure, a tall, thick-set Almaa, clad in worn armor and peering up at the outer walls of the keep. In his hand is a small piece of charcoal, and it ke works fervishly, feverishly at taking notes upon a small scrap of paper. More than once, he has to reach up to prevent his colorful cap from falling off his head as he gazes upwards. What are you doing over there? The man looks over at you, blinking in surprise. His face splits in a wide and too very toothy grin, and he waves the parchment in greeting. Yeah, he looks cheery. Look at that little picture here. A big, toothy, very spiky toothed grin. Killing time, if I'm honest. I've already walked the perimeter twice. There are names scratched upon the, some of the bricks just there. Workers and masons, I expect, carving a little immortality for themselves. He looks up the wall again, expression fond. 
It's a fine keep, Kadnua. Two centuries to its name and abandoned for nearly as long. But the truly interesting part is in there, and I haven't had much luck in reaching the keep itself. I hoped to find the master of this place, a man by the name of Meerwald, but it seems that he either holds his privacy most dear, or else has been devoured by his house guests. Oh, so we're here to meet Meerwald, and we may not be able to access him. I wonder if Kanan's going to be a new party member, because we, we have another portrait here. Big, strong Almawa. Um, okay, so what do you want from Meerwald? Knowledge. <laughs> or, to be less clever about it, a certain text. I've come in search of a great treasure, you see. Not gold or silver, but the Tanvi Oratoa. You might call it the Book of Virtues. It's a sacred text of Rawatai, but we possess only a small fragment of it. A year, I've journeyed in search of the rest, but I found evidence suggesting that the original lies here, beneath the keep. I want to ask Merwald if he knows of it. And you, my friend? Why are you here? Let's see, I too wish to speak to Merwald. Truly. Then perhaps we can help one another. The grounds are infested with all manner of beasts. It's n I've never seen the like. I didn't want to risk it alone, but you seem capable. To get together, I'm sure we could manage it, and then we could both ask our questions to Merwald. Let's go meet Merwald then. Excellent. Lead on, my friend, and I will be at your heels. Ah, wait. Speaking of that, I ought to warn you first. Wondrous teeth, I nearly forgot. I have, at times, been followed. It began in Adir, and in Exomital they attacked outright. I believe they do not wish for me to find what I am looking for. Exomital. We learned how to pronounce something new, I think. I'll probably forget it, but I'll try not to. Exomital. I say believe, but I have been told as much by one of my would-be assassins. I pay them little mind. Humorless swords in long robes. But it's why I bought the sword, you see. And it's only fair that you should know. So he's also being pursued by someone that want, maybe wants their lives. Huh. What are a few assassins between friends? <laughs> I'm glad you're not discouraged. Come then. Who knows what we will find inside? Alright, we immediately already found a new friend. We have five party members, not counting the wolf. Six party members, counting the wolf. Uh, so, just be clear, you're a fighter, right? I think I just assumed you are a fighter and didn't necessarily look closely. Hey. Edar? If I look at your character from here, probably have to press the character screen, sorry. There we go. Second level fighter, alright, I figured as much. Just wanted to make sure. Uh, abilities, fighting spirit. So, below 50 endurance, uh, all folk have an indomitable spirit that raises to the challenge when things look grim. Whenever a folk is below 50% endurance, they gain a bonus to accuracy, bonus to accuracy and damage. So that's a racial ability. If you're a human, care, if you play as a human, then you get a bonus to accuracy and damage when you're uh, low on when you're getting beaten down. Knocked down, we know about that. Constant recovery. That we saw that from the other fighter we had. Uh, charged by the rush of battle, the fighter will continually regenerate endurance at a modest rate. Looks like 1.2 endurance self plus 1.2 endurance plus 3.5 endurance. What? That's that's not really written in a very clear way to make you understand what it means, but people that are more in tune with the genre might know better. Rapid recovery uh, modifies constant recovery plus one endurance. Uh, Boosts the fighter's hardiness, increasing the rate of his or her constant recovery. So that must be what was picked when this guy was choosing talents. I say, even though it's a character and a person, that's not how that works. Uh, so what is our new character? We, we have our ranger, wizard, fighter, priest. And then next we have... L oh, he's a chanter. So he, this, these guys focus on special status effects, right? This is one of the characters I, I was tempting to make a character out of because... I was looking at him thinking, huh, that's an inter interesting set of abilities, but I think it might be confusing to do right off the bat. He gets, oh, he gets an extra weapon set, interestingly, and plus one intellect are his active effects. Uh, abilities. <laughs> what a freaking name. Uh, if their bones still slept under the hill, none can say. 
Summons three skeletons to fight for the party. Oh my god, he's a summoner. That sounds awesome. He has to fr he has to do three chanted phrases, apparently. We're gonna, this is going to be one of those classes that I might misuse at first, just trying to figure out how they work. March of the Kamoa. Uh, at the sight of their comrades, their hearts grew bold. Blessed was their Wengrith, quickest of his tribe. Instant. So that's just a song I sing, and then doing stuff like that, I assume, makes it so I can do stuff like summon skeletons, apparently. Arm to the teeth. All, uh, all island Amawa gained an additional weapon set. That's just who he, his origins. The thunder rolled like waves on black seas. Creates a thunderous explosion that stuns and shoves enemies in the area of effect. Uh, first level chanter spell requires three phrases chanted. Interesting. I, don't, I need to check to see if I can program characters the way you do in the first Dragon Age, because be, there's some actions that might be worth automating if possible. So it's a 3.7 meter cone. 90 degree, to 90 degree cone at that, at that range. That's a pretty big cone, actually. Uh, 14 to 21 crush damage. Stunned. Yeah. This character could be powerful. Let's look at his inventory. Where we might learn important things about him. Whoa. Okay, that's just a, that's just a turban. I was like, what, what happened? That's not what he looked like in the picture at all. What's he look like without, without the turban? He's got sort of a, he's got the sort of dreadlock look and face paint. Does the turban do anything interesting? Okay, this one actually does stuff. A lot of other helms just seem to be there to take up space. Uh, it's kind of turban of intellect one, so it ga he gains plus one intellect. Awesome. Uh, starting equipment, he has a fine estoc. 19 to 27 two-handed damage. So he's a melee character, huh? Arquebus, two-handed, extremely slow. This is a, this is a gun, if I, bl I believe. Uh, matlock fire, uh, matchlock fire are... <laughs> Matchlock firearms of high power and fair accuracy. Arquebuses are prized for their ability to penetrate wizards' arcane veils. Yeah, that's some pretty goddamn high damage. But it's extremely slow and it is a gun. I guess the question is whether I want another melee character or another ranged character, although I'm sure I can do both. Uh, fine ass dog. These, two, these long two handed swords are easily distinguished from great swords by their narrow spike shaped blades. Estocks are not commonly used by warriors in the Deerwood, but their value against heavily armored opponents is undisputed. So the extra. So they're, they're extra effective against people in high armor. That looks like very high piercing damage versus deflection. Okay. We're filling in. It looks like there might be room for a sixth party member because there's an extra slot down there, but for all, for all I know, another just. They might just add a scroll wheel as I add more characters. Do I want to give someone else a helm? No, that's my only male. That's only my, my only melee character, so he's the one that fits there. And I I keep my style and half to myself. It belongs with me. Let's see. This is going to be interesting. I have a new party member I don't necessarily know how to use yet. I figure, as far as the combat party goes, he'll probably go in the in the middle somewhere. Actually, yeah, maybe he should go up front. What's his damage? We should look at his damage reduction is what we should do. That's the character screen. There we go. So damage reduction of my of my tankiest character is 7. 3. Oh, his damage reduction is 10. He's wearing brigandine. Alright, so he's armored. How's his hit points? 200? This guy, so he has... He has like half as many as this character, but he has noticeably... Ah, uh, he has more than my spellcasters do, but not as much as my main character does, interestingly enough. Is he level 1 or 2? I should check. He's also level 2. Okay. So he might be handy to have up front. He, he's a high damage character, but he starts off to, uh, equipped with a with this gun. So he may... There might be a suggestion that he's most effective at range. We're going to have to figure out a, a, a series of uh, shapes here. Might as well put it. Probably should just put him in a similar position to our uh, our other starting uh, ranged character, and keep our mages in the back like usual. This is probably a valid way of handling this. Go ahead and click on it to proceed, and we need a casual walking around town position. So there we go. Sort of walk as a chain, I suppose. With our, I guess it keeps wanting our wolf to, tra to trail in the back, and I guess that kind of makes no sense. Problem. Okay, so, there's our formation, melee in the front, ranged in the back, 
Should I check the perimeter a little bit? He said he's already walked it twice. That means there shouldn't really be anything around here, huh? It's probably going to taper off here. Or is it? Maybe it won't. What's the map look like? Okay, so I, I can circumvent it if I want to. This might not be worth doing. Here, double speed. So, anything to interact with over here? Some skein bone. That's about it. Oh, inspect this. Once shattered, one shattered cask still smells faintly of ale, long spilled into the dirt. All right, we're just gonna go ahead and head back down to where we were. Come on, guys. I love that we have a have, have different speed modes. That's handy. All right, definitely leaving fast mode as we investigate whatever the hell's going on inside here. Hey, guys. Cold and dry with cobwebs in every crack. It reminds me of Woodica. Is Woodica also full of beasts that killed the inhabitants of the area? Enemy spotted shadow. Oh, it's up here. Let's see, let's get a little closer. What is this thing? It's called a shadow. It just looks like some sort of wraith thing. When you said beast, I was kind of expecting something different. Kana, ancient memory, six hit. I think he might have figured out what he wants to do right off the bat. Alright, everyone. Let's get into combat here. I guess Khan is doing some sort of chanting, so he knows what to do. Let's look at what is- oh. This is weird. So. His chanting spells specifically look like music notes. What's this thing over here? First level ch chanter spells. Edit chants. Uh, requires three phrases chanted, so I have to, I have to, phrase, I have to do three ch phrases first, and then I can either summon skeletons, or do a, a thunder attack. We'll see, well, I, I'll trust him to automate for a bit, just to figure out how this works. Oh, we have company right off the bat. How's the, how, how much damage did that do to him? This guy just took like uh, 19 damage, and he is badly injured. All right, th that took out about 60% of his hit points. So these aren't very hardy characters, assuming that they actually go down as fast as I hope they do. Oh, that guy like teleported. Oh, he's dead. Cool. In that one frame, he basically died. So, everyone is currently getting a bonus. As the, at the side of their comrades, their hearts grew bold. Ten fortitude and ten will. That has to be a chant. Yep, and boldens allies in the area for of effect, giving bonuses to fortitude and will. So this chant is giving people some pretty strong effects, actually. And he's doing this in automated fashion, interestingly enough. Target, target destroyed Garrix. All right. Do I just let them automate right now? I feel like we're in a good position where I can kind of just let them do what they want. Oh, never, maybe not. They're just standing still. What is this? A will o wisp. Do I know anything about those? Should I focus on that? Is that a problem? I feel like wisps have been a bad thing before. Uh, okay, Durance just killed a shadow. How are we doing on endurance? Oh, my wolf's going down again. That happens a lot, doesn't it? Is he is he taken out completely? He is taken out completely. That wolf is not very hardy. I think we pretty much got this handled, though. Let's see if I can do some nasty spells here. Oop. Did not mean to right-click. Let's do an arcane attack on him. And my fire character could launch. Let's see. Will and concentration. That's probably good, because it's a spell-casting enemy. So doing an AoE that helps with that, with uh, potential spell resistances could be handy. There we go. It's kind of funny to see someone try to shoot what's basically a ghost. Will o Wisp is not going down very quickly. Eloth, you probably should not be standing over there, actually. Here. Let's have our character switch weapons real quick. Uh, can I use a chant? I can use a chant. Let's do this uh, thunder spell then. I'm out of range. Let's see, is he smart enough to approach it first? Yes. I don't necessarily trust him. We'll try to walk towards him briefly. There we go. Now let's do a nasty cone spell all up in his face. Hey, buddy. Screw you. Cast it, cast it, cast it. You can do it. Blammo. Oh, how's that feel? A little Fus Roda action for you. Maybe not as effective as I thought it would be. Okay, so. Switch to my weapon, my sword weapon set, and just start wailing on this guy. Let's tell. Now that he's backed off a bit, let's tell Aloth to switch to. We'll use magic missiles, basically, against the shadow. 
Is my ranger even attacking right now? Let's, let's back him off for a second, because that's what he's supposed to do. Alright, everyone successfully... Alright. So, Adar has destroyed his target. Let's get our mage to back... Oh, kind of... Okay. Everyone's destroyed. We're fine. Who else is left to get destroyed? Alright, we're fine. So, we lost some endurance over the course of the fight, but overall, the party's fine. Not much loss of hit points, so we don't need to recover, really. The endurance will recover with time, as it has. Okay. That's a lot to manage. I wonder how much... Let's see, it says Edar deactivates Fighting Spirit and deactivates Constant Recovery. Part of me just wants to hope that there's some level of automation with some of these characters, because that's a lot of stuff to keep track of. Let's see, personal... No, that's not really information we can do from here. Is there like a way of programming them, like in uh... I'm curious what this game lets you program characters like it does in uh, other games. Like Sma like uh, Dragon Age. Let's see here. We're just gonna start exploring here. Should I check that door back there? Here. Go to double speed. Frayed lengths of rope at it, and a few flint chips are scattered across this workbench. There's a garden here. Only weeds grow in this dusty patch. So, th so whatever has happened here, it's been going on for a while. And the fact that these are shadows that have like, they're reminiscent of being undead in some capacity makes me think that the Watcher's abilities may have led to some unwanted side effects. Mm -hmm. So I've told everyone to attack. I'm gonna start off with trying to hobble him with my with uh, my main character. Yes. I'll trust Kana to do the right thing. Yes. Uh, let's try to arcane assault, hopefully. Assuming he doesn't just move out of position immediately. He kind of did, okay. Let's, let's try casting arcane assault right in front of where they're gonna be then. And you can attack him head on. And where's my melee character? There he is. You should also focus on- you should probably focus on the Willow Wisps to hold him off. Oh, they're te teleporting characters. Okay, that's not good. Alright, let's switch to a spellcaster. Kana... Ah, uh, what are you doing here? Are you currently casting these abilities? What is this? Emboldens allies in the area? So this is just a mode he activates. Okay, so I just- is- ah... Uh, I need to figure out how chanters work. We'll switch him back to his gun, though. Let him focus fire in that way. Let's see, where is... We need to back off Aloth a bit. And back off hmm? Peril a bit. I don't like that they stand so close to combat. Yeah. Peril, let's see if you can take out this shadow. Try to do a... Is he already hobbled? No, but he's flanked, so I should get a bonus here. Yes. And Eloth has already taken quite a hit from standing where he was. Let's see, no uses left on any- oh, I can't use any more first level- first wizard spells. I need to look more into the requirements there. At least I have my arcane attack. So I must have to rest to use those again. I have a surprising lack of a uh, range with this. What is the range on this thing? 5 meters, area effect of 1.9 meters. No, I feel like- I think his range is greater than it seems to be. I think he's just running too close for some reason. See, what happens when I shoot with the wand? Does he- Does he shoot with the- Okay, he does- He does get ranged attacks. Good to know. Go get in the action wolf. Uh, Adar just got knocked out. That's not a good place to be in. And, yeah. So Adar's in trouble. Careful here. How many- Oh. Oh, oh, that was our- That was the shadow getting killed. That's good for us. Okay, so... We have one phantom. We have that that shadow's the one that went dead. That's dead. So we have a, a fan. We have a will o' wisp and a phantom now. The wolf will focus on the phantom. Uh, Edar is going to focus on the will o' wisp. I thought he was knocked out, but is he not? Didn't it say he was knocked out? Yeah. Did something get him back up? It says that uh. It says Phantom knocked out Adar, but Adar does not- is still... here. And he's not out of- he's not out of stuff. Let's see. He's flanked. He's flanked, confused, and stunned. But he's not knocked out. Huh. Maybe it's just being unclear about something. Anyway, 
tell our three ranged characters to focus on this uh, phantom to try to wipe him out as fast as possible. Alright, I think... I feel like we should have this. Uh, Garrix is low on endurance again. Let's try to back him off. And he knocked out Garrix. Oh right, just trying to move Garrix out of combat probably immediately makes him, uh... Just trying to leave probably makes him vulnerable. I probably just have to accept the hits while they're happening. Alright, so we lost our second tank for now. Willow Wisp is surprisingly hardy. Phantom's not going down either, and Adar is now low on endurance once again. Let's see, I'm supposed to have endurance recovering abilities up. I'm out of uses on this too. I have misinterpreted the number of uses you get per spell. So I need I need to read up I need to read up probably a Wikipedia page about spell casting in this game to figure out exactly how much you can use it because it looks like you can only cast one spell per rest, presumably, and most of my abilities most of my abilities uh, this per encounter stuff doesn't only really, it doesn't really apply to that many things. Let's try to help our our party go for a while. We're taking hits here. Everyone who's not focusing on this guy needs to focus on this guy to take him out. Uh, can I can I use a spell? I can use my AOE on this guy. Let's let's try to take him out. Oh, this is making one of my allies highlight. What's the context of the spell? Does it hurt allies? Shoves enemies in the area of effect. It just says it says shove enemies. Wait, is Edar an enemy right now? He's confused. Is that is that why he's an enemy right now? It, says, I, it looks like I can target him directly. Here, escape. Oh wow, yeah, I can choose to attack Edar directly. So he must have changed teams at some points. Yeah, Edar engaged Durance in melee. Huh. So we, I think we need to kill this phantom as fast as possible then. I think it's clouding Edar's mind and making him turn on us. That's not good for us at all. There's a lot to keep track of in this game. It's, this is the type of thing that would would with a, a lot of uh, this type of combat would is what a lot of genres would handle as being turn-based combat, specifically because it's kind of nuts right now. Let's try summoning some skeletons, maybe. That sounds like fun, right? Oops. Yeah, let's try summoning skeletons. Maybe that'll help us against this guy, since our tank has lost his mind. Oh, Phantom's down. All right, we're fine actually. Oh, oh shit! The Willow Wisp is now back. Oh, maybe the Willow Wisp uh, possessed Adar. Okay. Well, we'll do whatever we can to wipe this guy out then. I don't know if a knockdown works on a wisp, but let's try it. <laughs> Blammo. It's probably not effective seeing as it's not even a normal person. Adar could be doing better. But I can't really recover him right now. Uh, Adar's low on endurance again. It's, at this point, I just have to go for it, I think. Are you currently attacking, Eloth? I think I told everyone to attack. There we go. Get that auto attack going. And target destroyed. Alright. Things have gone. Why are you hit, why are you shooting your teammate? <laughs> Did, it was a line of sight issue, maybe? Oops, let's get out of fast mode. Willow Whips dropped spirit residue. Faint ethereal wisps of soul energy made manifest. Why not? It's probably handy in some context. So is line of sight an issue? Do I have to worry about line of sight when I shoot? Is that, is that why my wizard kept stopped shooting? Is because I he was hitting an ally? I'm not sure. The hedges grow in shaggy heaps shot through with weeds and tall grasses. So how do we approach this place? Everyone's still doing okay-ish. Edar's not doing great. Should I, should I look into recovering him? Is this endurance recovery or health recovery? 33 endurance over 12 seconds. So it would recover half the person's endurance, but not their health, which is their biggest problem right now. So Edar is taking some hits right now, unfortunately. Sure. Let's see. That makes me think I should put Kana in melee range. Let's switch Kana to sword. There we go. And we'll put him... We'll go ahead and put him near the front of the group. There we go. To help out with the fact that uh, he's taking so much, so much damage. I'll be sure to select my wolf, because I think I, I missed him. There we go. Is this the door that we used to get inside? It might be. The, the sooner we figure out what's going on here, the better, because the uh, 
The enemies are taking their toll for sure. So, things look promising here. Nice, friendly atmosphere. It's like an Applebee's. Anyone in here? I should probably be scouting around a bit, huh? The problem is something can go horribly wrong when I'm scouting. The shelves creak under the books. Many of the covers are mottled with mildew. Here. I'll tell the group to wait here. And we'll enter stealth mode. Oops. And my rogue character is going to wander off in double speed mode. To investigate the surroundings without alerting anything that might be in the area, hopefully. So we can get an idea of what we're going into. Can I, can I inspect this? Cobwebs bind the remains of a broken uh, alembic. A cracked mortar, and various shattered bottles and vials onto the table. Nothing immediately noteworthy here. Continue across the hallway and see what else we can find around here. I'm trying to be careful because there could be something dangerous, and if we can avoid fighting it, that could probably be for the best because these encounters are taking their toll. The sour odors of rancid grain and spoiled fruit permeate the air. Dust and rusted utensils cover the countertop. So it's just a decrepit area. I'm gonna go ahead and assume that I'm not necessarily doing bad so far, and that the damage I'm taking is normal, because when I played D&D in the past, I remember the party taking a fair bit of damage on a regular basis, and it was just... It was always a tense experience. Rat skitter among the broken stairs. I think the, uh... A lot of the numbers involved in these kind of games are also often intentionally small, and it's all about having a sparse number of tough encounters that could cause some damage, rather than doing... Rather than having, uh the spam of encounters that happen in other games. There's not much going on here, is there? Can I go anywhere? I don't think I can. I'll try going up the stairs, but I don't think- Nope, I can't go up the stairs. Alright. Uh, fast mode, leave stealth. We're getting out of here. Looks, looks like it's just completely empty. 